All right, we're gonna do one more test of FSD. This time we're gonna try the highway driving. Waymo, of course, can't go on the highway, so it'll be interesting to see how FSD performs. We're here in downtown Santa Monica. We're turning left. Nicely done. Jumped right into the right turn lane so it can make a right turn. You could just lean back in FSD mode? Yeah, put it into the video profile. Dude, sometimes I've been noticing I do that too. Like if I'm FSDing, I'll kind of like lean back yeah. a little and like chill out more. It's nice. Yeah, definitely. I think this is the biggest thing. What you do with your foot, yeah. if you're driving a long distance, that has massive implications to your whole body and muscular structure yeah. that make you extremely uncomfortable and are like 90% of the reason you're in pain and just uncomfort driving. Yeah. So that's like what is such a subtle thing, but not flexing my right foot constantly in this weird extended position and relaxing it evenly. Yeah. Like, is that's what allows me to drive for 10 hours instead of like one hour and then I'm ADD fidgeting in my seat getting annoyed, you know? Dude, 100%. It's crazy. The fatigue is real, like, and we I got the Cybertruck, it didn't have FSD for a while. I'm like, man, I love driving this thing long distance, but my arm hurts, my legs hurt, you know? And with this, you can just relax. And a lot of people are like, well, what's the point if it's supervised? Well, the point is, you're not tired. You don't have to touch the controls. And what's the point of me touching the control if the car can already predict what it needs to do on its own? Look at how smooth this shit is. Dude, I think it's smoother than the Waymo. Like, That's what I'm telling wow. you. Ah, wait, we gotta get the camera. <laughs> I think it's smoother than the Waymo. Like this whole time, it feels like a human driver. It's not feeling like like smoother than the human driver. Honestly, like it's yeah. just feeling so clean. It's like a professional chauffeur these days. I'm not. I'm not thinking about that we're in FSD. Like I'm just right. thinking about the conversation. Mm -hmm. All right, so we're about to get onto the freeway now, 10 East from Santa Monica. We're headed to Beverly Wood. So Waymo really doesn't do the freeway. No. So if I were to take the same trip, like you should actually go in your Waymo app right now and punch in the same address, two two three two, Duxbury Circle. It's 18 minutes for us. It would probably be significantly longer in the Waymo. Because they're not going to take, they can't take this route. Yeah, they have to take surface streets the whole way. Wow. Damn. So it's adding up the things today. It's like the Waymo, it was, it couldn't take us where we needed to go. It took 20 minutes to pick us up versus two minutes for Uber. The cost was about the same, so that was okay. But now, and then the other thing is it also can't take the most efficient route a lot of the time because it's not on the, it can't go on the highway. So very interesting to kind of like once you try and make the Waymo practical versus a fun first yeah. ride it starts to fall a little bit flat and if you priced it at a level where they're not losing money it would cost several times what an uber costs they're just holding the price artificially low and losing billions in the process yeah and that's one of the most fascinating things is like Waymo is just extremely confidential about their financials no one knows their financials yeah. no one knows how much they're spending no one knows how much they're making which is adds to the level of mystery, but all the speculation is pointing to they're losing massive amounts of money. Yeah, I've noticed a lot of people, they don't know how to call the autonomy race. It's like you're watching a marathon and you're standing at the starting line and you watch these guys go off and you go, oh, that guy won. Yeah. He was the first off the starting line. But it's really exciting that we can take driverless rides now. Nobody's more excited about that than me. But we also need to realize the finish line is nobody owning cars anymore. It being so cheap, so easy, and able to go anywhere that you truly don't need to own a car. And the fact is, nobody right now is giving up their car to ride Waymo full time. Because the cost isn't there, the service area isn't there, and the car is too expensive to own. And it's, it's funny to me how many people are like, get in the Waymo for the first time and it's like, whoa like my parents and it's like and then i'm like you know i have this in my car and i like it's been driving me everywhere and it didn't have to be like an app and a thing like and actually you have a tesla so you have this too but they're just too old and don't realize it <laughs> but it's like that's what's mind-blowing to me is like i have this superpower and just a boop whenever i want and it's incredible
Yeah. I mean, there are so many people who, once they get used to it, there's a lot of Tesla owners who don't even know about it, but once you get used to it, I hear people say, I'm never buying a car without this again. I'm one of them. Yeah, me too, obviously. Well, I've got- Walmart's car killing it right now, <laughs> great work. I've got, yeah, and you know, I would be annoyed if I was stuck in this, right? I'd be pissed off, I'd be getting mad at this guy, probably cursing at him. Trying to like change lanes. Yeah, with FSD, I don't care. I'm not stressed about trying to make the exit in time. I don't even have to think about when the exit is. It's gonna calculate if we need yeah. to change lanes. It's just gonna do it. Yeah, like I would be getting stressed. I'm like, okay, we got two miles. Like there's, we're on the far left lane. Yeah. Like how are we gonna get over all the way to the right? Like, right. I should start to be thinking about that. Yeah. And the thing is, I'm 100% confident it'll make the exit. Okay, this is, see now this is like the final test for FSD. <laughs> We've been taking it, we're almost, get, so now we have this little strip. It's got yeah. two miles until National Boulevard. Right. We are all the way on the left lane. Game time. It's gonna be a piece of cake. The 10's just a parking lot right now. Dude, I, I do feel like when they do the first cyber cab ride, like it might need to be home ours. Um, I mean, I already took a cyber cab ride. True. But, but you like mean the first one. public well, cyber cab you know, ride? No, I was, took a ride in Autonomy Day mm -hmm. yeah. in the first car with Julian and Ross Gerber in 2019. Like the first, oh, yeah. it was like 1010 kind of, but they did it yeah. in the Model 3 and they had uh -huh. the Tesla app pick us up. And there was a Tesla employee in the front seat and it was legendary. But I remember Ross Gerber wouldn't shut up. So the whole time, like we couldn't get a word in or hear what the Tesla guy was saying because Ross oh Gerber was God. talking over him. And it was like, but I don't know, just a funny, you remind me of that <laughs> story. That's hilarious. Yeah, we've come a long way since then. That was like a canned demo. Now any car can just really do that. Yeah. Yeah, so this is the big traffic block here. You got the 405 and the 10 intersecting, but yeah, I mean, honestly, I don't know how anyone in Southern California lives without this. Imagine if this is like your daily commute. You would literally lose your mind. You'd slowly go insane if you didn't have FSD. I'm convinced. <laughs> this is like a dumb analogy, but it's me, it's almost like Bitcoin. It's like you earn, they say like you earn when you buy Bitcoin, because mm -hmm. it's like you'll, when you figure it out and decide to buy it, like that's, it's kind of like a fair system. You know, I feel like FSD is in some ways a similar thing. It's like the secret's there. Like if you right. want to do your homework and, and figure out that you can buy a car for like 50 grand that will literally drive you anywhere, yeah. fancier than a million dollar Ferrari, like it's out there. But just most, and it's like, you'll you'll treat yourself to the luxury that all of us experience, which is never driving myself, feeling like I'm on like a joy ride throughout Los Angeles when I want to get anywhere. My car takes me there perfectly smoothly, zero stress. And that's a secret that I've been enjoying for years that I still feel like most of the country has no idea about this yeah. and they're just missing out. And it's like, all right, the longer you want to say Elon doesn't know what he's doing and the tech doesn't work and the more blah, blah, blah. It's yeah. just at some ways, it's just you're hurting you. Yeah, I mean, I think people just don't know. They don't know that you could actually just lease one of these for $2.99 a month. Like anyone can afford that almost. If you have a job, you can probably lease one of these things. And we were just looking at a Model 3 for my girlfriend. We looked at the Honda Accord bigger down payment wait really yeah i'm curious about this bigger down payment slightly bigger monthly payment it was pretty much similar but then obviously when you factor in fuel and maintenance the tesla's way cheaper so that was kind of the mind-blowing part is not only do they have this car that can drive you anywhere but it's actually cheaper than a honda accord it's cheaper to lease than a honda accord and then now they got this promotion three months of free supercharging three months of free fsd you can get this and just self-drive anywhere. You could self-drive to New York and back for three months and it's on Elon. I mean, I've been trying to do a road trip. Oh, this is, look at this, got a random car stopped here. Wow. Like, no problem. They just didn't even phase it. That was good, because I feel like that could have. Wait, and did I not even realize that we yeah. perfectly made the exit? It was so smooth, Out of our chit chat, I forgot, yeah. I forgot. We did, we, no one was stressed about the lane yeah. changes. That's crazy. Exactly. Wow, honestly. Oh, this light bar thing is so cool. Yeah, it. you can change the color too. 
it's and it was kind of sophisticated enough to stay in the left lane, yeah. avoid all the traffic that was going uh, yep. right, you know? It's okay. And and then kind of turn, get in the right lane when it was emptier. Here, do you traffic. want me to fix it? it Let's see. Oh, I messed up Homer's camera. I'm a big That's okay. It's not a big deal. Sorry. <laughs> Great point, though. You didn't. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, I mean, and cameras. It's doing it all with just cameras. And, yeah, it... You know, it could get it could get over too early, and then you're just driving too slow. You're annoyed. You take over, but it actually just stayed in the fast lane. It's now good enough at changing lanes that it can stay in the fast lane longer and get you there faster. All right, come on, we got to make this green light, baby. Let's go, Tesla. Let's go. There we go. Buttery. Buttery. All right, we're five minutes away from our destination now. Good handling of the yellow light there. So smooth. It's crazy. You remember in 2019 when Autonomy Day happened and people were like, don't you need LiDAR? You can't drive a car without <laughs> LiDAR. People really believed that. And I mean, the dude's just got so much vision to be able to say, wait, you know, we can drive with cameras. Well, and everyone was like, no way. And, and they did it. And he's been landing rockets with LiDAR. And then the, so yeah. he knows it. And then the hubris of like, you've never heard of LiDAR in your life. And you read one article. And now you're trying to explain to me why Elon Musk's wrong. Because you read an article about, it's like, you don't even know what LiDAR is. <laughs> like, it's just this, it's a common thread I've seen of just like, just in general, people talking about what they don't know about. Yeah. Uh, and I think that Tesla is, like Aiden was trying to tell me, uh, someone he met, someone, someone was like, well, you know, Ford's just going to compete and crush with Tesla. And like, so yeah. BMW. And like, that's still the narrative. Right. And it's like, and he was trying to tell me like, how would you answer to that person? Or how would you? Yeah. And it's like, I don't know. Like at some point it's like, I don't care what they think because people are going to be wrong and dumb forever. And it's like the hubris to like come yeah. out with such a hot take when you know nothing. How it's many, just constantly happening. How many people say LiDAR and in, in, like to your point, Gally, couldn't tell you about LiDAR technology? Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, you really have to realize as a tech investor that people are just wrong all the time about all kinds of things. <laughs> people don't see a lot coming. Um, I mean, the thing about self-driving is we thought it's about accurately seeing what's in front of you. We thought, okay, LiDAR is great because it can measure what's in front of you. It can measure how many inches away the car is. But we saw cameras navigating all these tight spaces. It can do it fine. It turns out what's actually really important for self-driving and smooth self-driving is predicting the future. So you don't actually want to see what's in front of you. You want to see what's about to happen. And cameras and deep learning are really good at that because you have a much higher volume of data. So that's really what most people didn't see is that it's not about what see, uh, it's not about seeing what's in front of you. It's about seeing the future. It's about thinking, what wow. is this guy going to do? Is he going to, you know, go a little bit this way? Is this car going to bump out? You know, Dude, this what's going to happen profound, next? What you just said. Yeah. All right here, we got somebody raking. Some old woman raking. Just in the zone, not giving a fuck. And then notice how the car continued moving smoothly. You noticed with the Waymo, in situations like that, it had to stop and wait, mm -hmm. right? Or it had to slow down. Because it didn't it didn't have confidence in the future. It just knew someone was there. It was just me, or it kind of veered a bit left. It kind of gave a little yeah, bit of space. Yeah, of course, yeah. Ever so subtly. But the thing is, like, that's the harder part. How do you tell the difference between someone who's trying to cross the street and someone who's just trying to rake the leaves on the side of the street, right? It's, oh, it's, a, it's, yeah, it's something humans can do instinctively, right? But it's something that a computer, I mean, you can have a LiDAR and scan it and say, hey, there's a person there. But to know what they're thinking, what they want to do next, that is, you know, you can't just get that based on their position. You need to actually look at their face. You need to look at their head. You need to look at whether they're holding a rake. And those are the things Vision's really good at. Oh, this is another good one. We got the leaf blower. <laughs> Not a oh no, we're turning left. Wow, 
All right, we got a speed bump here. I think a huge part of the trust too is like being able to see the screen. Yeah, totally. Okay, this is interesting. There's like, the doors open on the dumpster. That was really good. It moved over ever so slightly. Interesting. I almost would have been down there. Whoa. Yeah. Not that long ago, that would have been a takeover. That was a tough speed bump to see in the shade there. Mm -hmm. They handled it pretty well. All right, and we're pulling up now to our destination. That concludes our self-driving test for the day. I gotta say, pretty impressed with both. Like. You know, the Tesla, you almost never have to touch anything anymore. It can drive you all around LA for an hour, no problem. Feels like we've achieved a new milestone where it's like, yeah. I'm like, am I even gonna, is it even bother like recording next time we hang out? It's yeah. Like, <laughs> well, next time we make a video, it'll be V13. That's gonna be crazy. All right, it's looking for a good place to pull over. It's like, all right, here's the spot. Cool. Thanks for watching, everybody.